What's going on everybody? Gunner here. Uh, for like the past two weeks I've been posting a lot of musky flies on Instagram and they've all featured kind of a custom shank up front. Um, and it's just something I, I have been doing to properly space my hooks but still allow me to tie a single hook uh, pattern for ease and really durability and also so they don't fall on a bunch of different reasons. Uh, but I've had a lot of interest on how to make those shanks and what tools and wire and everything else. So what you guys need, this is 051, so 51 thousandths of an inch diameter stainless steel wire. Now everything I'm gonna kind of promote here I got from the same place, I have no relationship with them, uh, but it's a lureparts.online.com and they have like a uh, lure parts by species, muskies, inline bucktails or inline spinners. This is inline bucktail wire for making bucktail spinners. I am using a tool it's called the Dubro Bucktail Twister. It was the basically most cost-effective one I could find. It's also one that you can just do in your hand, which I kind of like. I didn't really want like something that I had to bolt down or a setup or a big doohickey. I just want to hold it in my hand and bend stuff. So <clears throat> that's all we're using. So I'm going to pop out some wire here. I don't know, like eight or nine inches. You can be more economical than that but having a little waste is not a big deal especially when you buy a pound of it <laughs> uh, hopefully the gopro will pick this up i just knew that if i used my dslr the focus would be all over the place but the way this tool works this is going to be my tag end that's going to form my loop i'm going to form my loop first i got to first pre-bend that so i'm pushing it right against that line take my tool here Make a nice little loop there. <clears throat> now it's got a nifty little notch on this side and a little post to catch all your wires in. And it comes with a hex wrench. Lock that in place, insert the tip of that thing. One, two, three. And I'm gonna do a three turn barrel knot right there. And you'll feel it when you take it out, but that wire will even be a little bit warm when you deform it like that. Cut the tag in, and there's a barrel knot, like that. Basically this serves as your attachment point, is you can use any snap on the market, you can use split rings, you can use any sort of bite tippet, you could fish a 125 pound mono, everything will comfortably fit through that thing, no problemo. Now this is the whole reason I do it, for this step right here. I get to choose what length this is. Uh, and as far as my fly design, and how I proportion my flies and where I want that hook usually depends on my tail, the, the hackles that I have, the, the length of my extended bodies, how many tube sections I do, how long my bucktail is. But in order to make that fly proportional and finish it the way I want to finish it, this shank length really needs to be built on the spot per each fly. And this is something that I do literally in the moment. I, I never make these production just for the sake of having them. I always do it per fly, because each fly is different because uh, using natural materials, and natural materials are always inherently different, there's variation. Uh, and so that's why I started doing this, because in order to get the correct proportions for the correct hook placement, for the correct material length, for the correct fly build, I need to be able to customize the shank. So if it's 45 millimeters or 50, or 55 or 60 or 65, to get that perfect mid-body hook placement on like a 12 inch fly for that T-bone grab. That's the thing about commercially available shanks. You got 28, or you got 40, or you got 80, and there's no forgiveness. There's no wiggle room, there's no variation. So, <clears throat> let's set this to some vague length that I'll hopefully find uh, very useful. Uh, the only thing you gotta remember here is you want this hoop to basically be perpendicular to your hook eye orientation. So you can see this is vertical. I'm gonna make a, a lateral loop here, and I'm gonna go pretty big, because I have a bunch that are close to 45 or 50. So I'm just gonna get some variation in what I already have. Get out of here, musky fly. Boom, bend that flat against my arm. Make my loop here. Nah, might have been a little far. Flip that sucker over. And this tool, by the way, is not designed to make custom R bends, <laughs> uh, but you can obviously use it to whatever capacity you want. 
And so that's a little finicky. I know I didn't probably uh, articulate anything useful there. It's just something you got to play with, but you just flip it upside down and create the same bend angle so that you got a perfectly shaped R bend that'll close on itself. Now with some little bit of time and patience, you just line up your wires. Make sure that those guys are truly perpendicular to each other. Yippity yip, good to go. Now what's sick about doing it this way, I just have the one R bend in the back here. And what's really nice is that means I only have one tag end of wire. If you look at the commercially available ones, they have two R bends. So you have two pieces of wire and there's a little space in the middle and that, that space drives me crazy because I always, it's like the perfect spot where I'm gonna put bucktail and so I'm like either 100% chance I'm going to cut my thread or I'm trying to build a thread ramp and hollow tie what the changing diameters. It drives me crazy. So being able to just lock that down uh, and have just the same diameter wire all the way across with my one R bend, it's actually kind of significant to me in the tying process. The other really nice benefit here... <clears throat> is I can make that double section of my R bend infinitely long. Like I took it basically all the way up to where my barrel knot is, just shy of it so I could fit basically one perfect bulkhead tie up there. But everything just runs the full length. So when I lock this down, I now have a fairly rigid shank. Being able to make my R bend go the full length of the shank helps stabilize it so I can actually tie with a lot of pressure and I don't bend that thing to kingdom come. So. <clears throat> That's how you make a custom Arben shank for musky fly fishing. So I'm just going to chat here for a moment and share some thoughts on things. Uh, one being kind of just shank design, but also fly design as far as how I'm using these, right? Because the whole point of this is to displace a hook farther back into a fly so you can run it single hook. Um, so these are all probably 12 inch. I think every single one's 12 inch. This one in the vise is 16 inches. I'll show you that one in a second. But all the designs are just dressed single hooks in the back long hackles to get your length and flashaboo and then a custom shank up front for proportions and length you can see on every single one of them that hook i like to go like basically in the third if you if this whole fly was a full length you've had like one third two for two thirds i like to put that hook point right at the third mark between a third and a half and so i have that custom shank build to get the proper proportions to run a single hook fly for proper hookups for musky and because it's a shank that's literally threaded through the hook eye, that connection won't ever fail, right? That's the whole goal. When you tie two hooks articulated, connected with wire, one, they tend to follow more. Two, the wire's gonna give eventually. It's not like gonna pull out of your thread wraps unless you don't have very good thread pressure, but it'll literally break and fatigue, and there's a lot of things you can do to try to mitigate that. But I find it really irritating on the vice and time consuming, and this is just a simple alternative. It's the simplest alternative, which is kind of why I'm reversing backwards and gravitating towards it because it's simplest now other ways to get the length <clears throat> this is a 35 millimeter articulated shank so the thinner wire version from flyman in the rear and in the rear it has no pressure on it there's no pull on it because there's no stinger hook and then i have my hook dressing so basically i'm getting the same length i got with that fly a little bit more bulk in the back and I had shorter hackles, which is why I did the extended body with the shank tying. And then I have my custom shank up front to properly place a long shank six aught right in the third mark, which is the sweet spot for me. That's what I wanted. It's everything that's perfect. I did the same thing with the GB Predator swim bay hook. This fly is actually weedless. It has my six aught GB Predator swim bay hook in it. The hook point is right here third to halfway, absolutely picture perfect. And it's got like a massive 60 millimeter shank up front for the proper spacing because I had some super premium whiting uh, slopping coming out the back. And it's like, if I can't control the custom length of the shank, I can't control the proportions and I have to then mix and max shanks and do like a 40 and a 28, but then I have that joint and it's really hard to tie back that rear bend. It's like the worst place to try to put bucktail. So like if I can only put it there once and then everything else is nice and easy tying, that's way more fun for me. When I have to do that stupid thing right tight to the vise and try to get everything in there, I hate that. It just drives me nuts. <clears throat> the other option, this thing is massive by the way. It's like 16 inches of epicness. But this has this 
hook backwards is a build a beast, which I have a tutorial for, but it's all tube extensions, really small tubes that are threaded onto a wire, and the end of them is crimped. It's crimped close so they can't come off. And then I put a custom proportioned relative to the fly for proper spacing shank up front. I freaking love it. So it's a 16 inch fly, no stinger hook, with a perfect one third to mid body hook placement, which is a 6 TP 610. And so it's like these shanks just allow me to get dial in the exact proportions with ideal single hook hook placement on massive flies that don't foul, that cannot fail. That's why I'm doing this. Aside from the fact that you get a massive loop in the front, so you can attach literally anything to it. Anything will go through that loop. So all of the bite wire, all the, all the attachment methods, all the snaps, all the whatever you want to do, everything will fit through that thing easily. <clears throat> On top of the fact that the R-Bend, just one R-Bend, so you don't have the two with the dead space in the middle that you want to use, but it's really irritating to try to use. Uh, but also you get the full support of that R-Bend wire running the full length of that thing so that it's not bending and flexing all over the place like crazy. And probably the third thing I'll give you is that R-Bend in the back using that Dubro tool. And you, if you get a bucktail spinner tool, my guess is the, the barrel loops are just uh, probably all about the same. Uh, but you get a massive loop in the back. The massive loop in the back is critical because you can fit that thing in your vice jaws with a hook in there and actually lock it down. So this is my shank that I just made. Look how big that loop is. This is the commercially available option. Very small loop comparison. So my vise can literally grab all of that meat on there and lock that thing down. So it ain't moving all over the place and sliding in my vise jaws or slipping. Plus I have room for a hook threaded on there. This is much harder to get a proper hold of. So that's everything you need to know. You only need those two tools, you only need that one thing of wire, and you can make shanks from whatever size you want, 15 all the way up to 80 and everything in between to custom fit your fly builds. So thanks for watching, hope that helps you out, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.